Hi, I'm Megan with Gulf Coast Kids House, Outreach and Development Director, and I'm here with Jessica Mayo from Lutheran Services Florida, and also a therapist um, with our um, sexual abuse therapy here at Gulf Coast Kids House. Well, not here at Gulf Coast Kids House, we're here at Jessica's house. Thank you for having us. Um, but we wanted to bring you guys an update um, as our donor, donors and supporters um, on really how, what adjustments you guys have made um, to continue to serve our clients. Um, and, and with all the advances in technology and how you guys are kind of making that work um, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, so it's, um, it was a little bit of a struggle at first because just making all the decisions and jumps and on the fly and that kind of thing. So we actually have implemented using teletherapy services. We have started using Zoom. We're using the, um, the telehealth version, which is all HIPAA compliant, encrypted, and has all that kind of good stuff because I know there's been some talks about Zoom and the problems, but the telehealth version actually has all the special encryptions and the HIPAA compliance and all that kind of good stuff to prevent um, any kind of um, people jumping in and breaking into your meeting so it's fully confidential, all safe and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've had really good results. I think it's really been um, awesome to be able to offer people the option of doing that. They're at home and locked down, but um, parents are meeting and eager to be able to get some feedback and some assistance during the shift with all this. and kids are set up in their bedrooms and so it's a shift to not be able to do play therapy like in the play therapy room and that kind of stuff but we're learning how to do kind of play therapy with kids in their own rooms and they're using their own stuff to tell their stories um, and to work with us um, and to do their own kind of calming stuff and so it's actually been really great to see things from a different perspective um, but still be able to work with families and um, get them what they need during this time um, because with the addition of you know we're all going through a crisis together and so um, they have their normal crisis that they're dealing with and the trauma that they're dealing with in addition to um, this different time that we're working through and being able to kind of work with them and help them through that too is, is, has been great that with, with the technology. And we also got it approved recently that um, if families don't have access to that kind of technology, we can even provide therapy by phone, um, which has not been something that's been allowed in the past because it's not really as therapeutic as it can be. Um, but um, the, the Office of the Governor and the Attorney General have, have decided that because this is a crisis that we're in and we don't want anyone to go without what they need, we can now pro even provide therapy um, via the phone if families don't have access to the technology to do Zoom and those kinds of things. So, awesome. Yeah. Is this something that you guys think that you'll continue to implement throughout your program even after the, the pandemic is you totally know, not a factor? Anymore? Right now, we don't have a plan for that. Um, but I think it would be something that would be great to explore because I think it helps families that are more rural um, and are not as close to Pensacola um, and can easily get to and from us. I mean, we try to, to be accommodating, offer late appointments and things like that, but still even, even if you're offering a seven o'clock appointment for a family that lives in, let's say, Century and they work until five or six o'clock and then have to get home, get their kiddo and get back up to the kid's house, that's still kind of inaccessible. Um, but right now, they in the past, all of our funding sources um, haven't allowed for um, haven't allowed for teletherapy services or phone services and things like that. Like I was just saying about the phone services, we had to go through special permissions and get approval to be able to provide all of that stuff. So in the past, that hasn't been something that they've allowed. It's just been kind of a special circumstance they allowed for us um, in the midst of this crisis. So I kind of am hoping that they will see the benefit of it for families that are difficult to reach because. There are times whenever families are just have trouble. And so the best therapy, especially when working with the trauma, is face-to-face -face and being able to be interactive and engage in play and all the other techniques that we do that are so interactive. But I think being able to offer trauma services in some form or fashion is better than nothing at all. And so I'm hoping that maybe they'll see that for special circumstances and extenuating circumstances that this is something that they could support down the road. We'll just have to see when this crisis is over if it's something that, um, you know, VOCA and the Attorney General's office and things like that can get behind as an ongoing thing. I'm just really happy that right now in this crisis Absolutely. that they're supportive of it and, and letting us be able to figure it out and take care of people whenever Perfect. they need it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so tell us about, you guys obviously had clients in therapy when this whole pandemic happened, um, and they may have been at a certain point in their um, progression through their program. Um, and then you've also probably had new clients as well. And so are you guys seeing a different shift in, in attitudes and things that you guys are treating um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I mean, we've had, I mean, we've always, I mean, 
mean, what we've always done is sexual and physical abuse. We've always dealt with families that are in the midst of their, their trauma and their crisis. And so that's not new. I do think that in the circumstances of what's happening now, people being, um, you know, more confined, people don't have the outlet that they normally have to cope and deal with things. And so things can be a little more frustrating and, and, and extenuating. Um, you know, there has been an uptake. Um, I think everybody else that you've talked to already has talked about how there's been kind of an uptake um, in more egregious, um, more severe kinds of things that are happening. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the confinement, um, um, whether it's inc increased frustrations or um, increased opportunities or whatever the case may be. So we have seen some of that. Um, I think even with our clients that we were already seeing, um, we've seen kind of an uptake in behaviors maybe reoccurring that we had already gotten kind of rid of. Um, so some re-increases in you know, some behaviors and things like that. And I think again, that has to do with everyone's routine is thrown out of balance. Um, you know, it's really important that kids have structure, but even adults and as parents and caregivers, we need structure and consistency and things like that. And, um, you know, COVID has kind of thrown us all out of that. We're all out of our, our normal routine, not going to the office like I normally do. My kids are not going to school like they normally do. They're not going to their after school programs. They're not getting those normal, you know, energy out they normally would get out. We're kind of confined to the house. Um, and so I think it's important to just realize that um, kids are out of their norm and we're out of our norm. And um, while it's important to stay within a routine and some structure because we all need that, and the kids that have been through trauma really need structure for the safety that it gives them. But at the same time, to have a balance between, this might not happen today like I planned for it to. And to just take a deep breath and say, you know what, maybe we just need to take a break right now and um, take a breather so that frustrations just don't keep, keep rising and then it leads to some conflict and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe a little more grace for each other. And we all need that, right? <laughs> a little more grace for each other and, and, and grace for ourselves. Because caregivers, I think, um, you know, I think we get this expectation that, oh, well, you're at home and so you should be able to just take care of this no, no problem. Um, but I think our routines, it, sometimes I've had p parents that I'm working with and they're just trying their best and it's like, what day is it? It's, it's, it's today Thursday, I'm not sure it's today Thursday. And it's not because they're not trying, it's just that everything's out of whack. And so, um, taking some grace, giving, get, take, get, taking a breath, taking a moment to realize and, you know. Well, so for those of us who aren't benefiting from a therapy program, from, from a therapist's perspective, can you give us any tips on how to really keep ourselves sane through all of this. Um, you yeah. know, we all we all need a therapist like Jessica at, at our side helping us through this, but so give us a few tips and tricks that just the average person can do with, with or without children. So I, I think that um, I, I don't want to have kind of a double-sided thing that I'm saying, but it's important to stick with a routine. Um, a routine is very important because the structure does kind of help us kind of keep our balance and our security. Um, so, you know, kind of having a routine that when you get up and kind of fall on your routine, um, you know, getting up, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair kind of stuff. Take a shower. <laughs> yeah, take a shower if that's what you normally would do if you were having your school routine or if it's nighttime shower. Whatever your normal routine would be if you were going to school or going to work, try and keep up with that. Um, at the same time, like I said earlier, if it's just one of those days where things are just not going to work out, sometimes it's okay to say today's not going to be our typical day and just take a breather. And while we all are confined to the house and at home and we're under a stay at home order, we don't have to stay inside. And so I think it's a good idea um, to take a bike ride around the neighborhood if you can, go for a walk, get out in the yard and do some tumbling and throwing the ball or playing around, whatever, get some fresh air. Excuse me. Um, do whatever you can do to kind of get out. I've even found that for myself, like. I don't think you should be taking your kiddos to the grocery store and things like that. But whenever, let's just say, I don't feel like cooking dinner tonight and I'm gonna run through a drive-thru and pick up some food, there's nothing wrong with loading the kids up in the car and going for a ride and listening to some fun music. It's a field trip. Yeah, rolling the windows <laughs> down um, or taking a ride to nowhere just to get out of the house. I mean, you don't have to break the rules of what we're supposed to be doing to keep each other safe to get out, roll the windows down, take a ride, listen to some fun music, you know, 
go eat outside in the yard lunch today. And well, maybe not today since it's raining, but on a day when it's nice and sunny outside, go outside and eat your lunch. Just do something to kind of get out and get some fresh air. Um, you know, and at the same time, I think it's okay to know that you need a little bit of a break and some space. And so, you know, I know not everyone has lots of space in their homes and things like that, but if you need to go hang out in the bathroom and take a shower to yourself, put some music on, take a bath, your kids may need that too. Those kinds of things are okay to say, hey, I need a little break um, and just take a breather. So um, routine, giving yourself permission to, to step out of your routine a little bit, um, taking breaks that still stay within the rules of what we're doing to keep each other safe um, are some big, huge things. Um, that I think um, everyone can do. Um, those are the, those are the big things, and I think we underestimate the, the ability. Um, I, I, I took a ride for my, by myself in the car, turned the wind, rolled the windows down, mm -hmm. and turned on some of my favorite music, and it was just really nice. I didn't realize how much I just missed taking a ride and listening to some music. So um, don't underestimate the little things. Oh, I'll take a little break. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking a little time. I know you're busy schedule, you know, um, you're still serving the kids, um, still doing lots of group therapy and those kind of things as well. Um, so keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thanks for keeping your staff and everyone safe and for um, always being a great partner at Gold Kids Kids House. So thank you. Thanks, y'all.